this is regarding Drake's tour that he's currently on. Um, it's going pretty well, to be completely fair. And one thing that's been really awesome to see about Drake's tour is that how he's been able to honor Virgil Abloh. During his stop over at Chicago, he commissioned this pretty cool, pretty cool statue of Virgil that was um, built and flipping installed into the stadium where he played in Chicago, basically for to ceiling that basically depicts Virgil in the iconic um, picture of him throwing the paper plane down the runway um, during his first, you know, Louis Vuitton men's Paris Fashion Week show that he did. The iconic one where he walks down the Paris Fashion Week show and he hugs um, Kanye at the end and he's crying. The one that's like a kaleidoscope, like a rainbow on, on the floor, right? It's a really iconic moment for him. And he really, really, really um, dedicated this to him in a really cool way because number one, the sculpture's done really well. He actually kind of looks like Virgil. Um, most of these kind of sculpture type things end up looking horrible so every commission to kind of get it done did a really good job um the detailing it looks amazing um during the show the paper airplane itself kind of flies off out of his hand um, as he's performing and there's also the added detail of him adding um, Virgil Abloh kind of designed off-whites um, you know that he's kind of wearing their Air Force Ones also that looks completely completely awesome I really do like that and it's a real credit to Drake because you know it's pretty obvious that Virgil and Kanye weren't too cool right weren't too cool when they when he passed unfortunately so despite how you know monumental and you know and integral they were to both of their careers and what they did to culture they clearly fell out along the way and it's been really sad as a kind of Kanye fan and a Virgil fan to see that they were as cool as I thought they were to the point where you know it came out that he wasn't you know Kanye wasn't invited to Virgil's private funeral he wasn't allowed to speak at the public funeral that he was invited to and clearly ever since then a lot of the family haven't really come out of their way to really you know say anything nice about Ye in any way shape or form and he hasn't really gone out of his way either to really honor his friend who played an integral role in his success or whatever it may be we're not really heard him really speak glowingly about him since he's passing in any way shape or form at all which has been really disappointing but for whatever reason, Virgil, even though he met Drake way later in his career, it feels like he had a stronger connection with him and has kind of gone out of his way to honour him way more than Ye has, which has been quite nice to see, to be fair. Um, he's really kind of done a good job in sort of like reminding everybody of his kind of influence, his legacy, and kind of, you know, putting that front and centre out there, which has been cool to see because you feel like, as bad as it is to say, because obviously you don't want to put those thoughts out there, but if roles were reversed and Drake was the one that passed, you know, touch wood, it doesn't happen anytime soon, you know Virgil will be going, you know, be going ham for him in terms of honouring him and making sure the culture knows, hey, this guy was important, this guy was valued, blah de blah 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 um, So that's cool to see it kind of being reciprocated in that regard. And again, I just like it because, again, it's his Chicago, it's his hometown, it's a nice little, you know, it's a nice little kind of reminder of kind of like the tie-in that Drake has with that state. Um, because of you know the, the influence of of Virgil and flipping Kanye and his career and whatnot, and with it just being a one stop kind of you know location thing, I think that was a great way to kind of honor him in that regard and kind of keep it pushing. So I, I really do see that. Um, the Tashki is saying here, the man didn't kill cancer. Why does he need a statue? No, you're right. I, I think if you don't care about fashion and clothes, this is gonna seem weird to you. But to me, to being a fan of the guy, I completely understand it. Um, I feel like if you don't have an interest in that sort of stuff, it's going to look like a bit much. But I feel like for it just being like a one-off thing um, for a couple of dates in Chicago, um, you know, Virgil's obviously from Chicago. Kanye is obviously from Chicago. Virgil played a big part in, you know, Drake's career and success and his design and his music and his outlook and shit. You know, he obviously famously helped to design the airplane that he flipping um, rides in when he goes on tour and whatnot cool so that connection is pretty decent and it's just a good way to kind of remind somebody of you know or to kind of honor somebody's legacy without it just being a kind of cringy montage kind of thing you put on the screens or so so i don't really mind it too tough but i can understand if you see it as a statue being somewhat symbolic of somebody that meant a lot in culture and you don't really see that much you know 
what you call it, meaning in Virgil or what he's kind of contributed into society overall. I can see it being a little bit much, but I don't know. I just see it as kind of like a an, a piece of art that happens to be a sculpture as opposed to it being a statue of somebody very important, right? That kind of is how I see it. I see like a sculpture that you maybe see in an art gallery or you might see in a public space somewhere, that kind of way, as opposed to a statue, you know, depicting a famous conqueror or something like that. Maybe, maybe, but hey, you know, what do I know when it comes to that sort of stuff? Um, so that's been pretty decent to see um, during Drake's show. One other thing that's not been cool to see, though, has been the performances. I'm not going to lie. It's been a little bit underwhelming. Um, the first thing that I don't really mind too tough is the hologram. While he kind of reads and does his little poem thing on the couch, it's pretty decent. These songs, you almost get a Grammy off in that vein, and uh, your boy, man, that black, you get an operation you dreamed of, and I finally say you're the wrong to get to make good on my promise that I'll work out for because a lot of people have been really confused is this a hologram is this real is this not because in one period of the show before drake goes to sit down the hologram basically hands him this new book of poems that drake is re is kind of releasing or has out at the moment to kind of preempt his album drop so thinking hold on how can a hologram hand you a book then he sits down and starts reading it next to the hologram and the hologram sort of like nodding along to the things that he's saying and shit. So that's pretty decent what they've done there. And I love how they've not even tried to explain what's going on in terms of technology or what's being used. Is it just a person there that has, um, what you call it? That has a, that has a uh, green screen face on or something. We don't really know. But either way, it's pretty spooky. I'll play a bit of the clip for you here. Take 17 songs. Clips aren't really playing, but hey, you can see here. You can see it for the most part. You get an operation dream. Right? He's moving around doing whatever he's doing. But the only thing that I don't like about the whole thing is the performances. The performances of Drake on the stage are very, very underwhelming. I have to be completely honest in this regard. Um, he essentially um, is just acting like the hype man of his own tracks, if that makes any sense. I'm surprised by it because I assume Drake would be one of those performances performance performers sorry um similar to kanye because he's seen kanye do it live and he's been there with him performing sometimes where you see that kanye kind of like has no vocal backing track when he's performing and he's rapping every single word he's fucking going for it but drake in this regard is acting like the hype man for his own flipping shows and just kind of like ad-libbing on whatever's being said I actually, when I do the clips later of the show, I'll probably put a little clip of it somewhere in here so you can see what I'm talking about because, you know, my computer's not the great in terms of playing clips. But you'll be able to see what I mean. Like, it's not the greatest. I have to be honest. It really does look bizarre how he's kind of performing on this show and how he's kind of doing it. I'm not really the biggest fan of it. It kind of looks a little bit underwhelming in that respect. And you have to imagine paying the price that you're paying to see him perform on stage and then seeing him essentially just jump around um, on the stage and sort of like, yeah, and point at people and kind of say a couple of words here and there. It's a little bit underwhelming in that respect. You expect him to kind of perform a little bit more. It just feels a little bit lackluster in that regard. But in terms of the stage show, I love it. Um, essentially what he's got is this huge square that basically acts like a screen where you project stuff onto it, or it's like an LED screen box thing that has different sort of, you know, designs and logos and illustrations and videos, whatever it may be kind of projected on there. And then there's obviously, the I think their projections, what they look like, similar to what Travis Scott had, of like UFOs beaming down, looking like they're going to beam him up and shit. That looks pretty cool. Obviously the Drake, sorry, the Virgil statue is obviously in there as well. All these sort of things kind of work there in that regard. I kind of don't really mind. But the performances of him actually dancing and, you know, whatever and rapping on stage are very lackluster and extremely, extremely underwhelming. I don't really like it. And I really don't think he's really giving you, I feel like, a reason why you should be going to his live shows. If he's just going to stand there and kind of like repeat a couple of words and ad lib some stuff here and there, I'd rather not go personally because it's going to cost a lot of money to see Drake. He's not some kind of, you know, fucking SoundCloud rapper, right? He's one of the biggest, he's the biggest rapper in the world, maybe one of the, the biggest artists in the world there, maybe second only to Bad Bunny or something. And it's going to cost an arm and a leg to get there. And if it's going to cost an arm and a leg, I want to see a performance that's worth the $100 or pounds I'm going to play. I think, yeah, the tour's called It's All a Blur. 
Um, the merch is pretty meh to me in that regard. I'm not really for me. But um, one thing that's funny, actually, is that uh, Drake does this, right? Which I love. Is that he walks out on stage through, like, it's a, obviously it's an arena tour. And he kind of walks out of the place. Um, how do you describe it? The kind of, the place where you walk out and to go into your seats if you're sitting in your seats, basically. He walks out through the stadium. And he kind of does this really dramatic walk because as you're walking out, you're walking past everybody down the stairs and they were touching her and shit. So it felt like to me, because Drake's always said already, he's in a very reflective mood. He feels very zen. Maybe he's doing some meditation. Maybe he's just really appreciative of his career. But it also feels like he's doing the thing where he's kind of forcing himself to get his own flowers. He's like, you know what? People aren't going to give me the ratings that I need right now. I'm going to give myself the ratings. I want people to recognize my impact and what I've meant to them in their life. And I want to receive that love now. I don't receive it when I'm deep, when I'm dead or something. All right, you know, in um, God forbid happening anytime soon. So he kind of is giving himself flowers by hook or crook, by purposely coming out through the crowd and having his security kind of like, you know, let people like, you know, touch him but not get too close and shit. It kind of feels like that a little bit, you know, a little bit. It kind of feels like a little bit like, this is very main character energy, like Drake's entrance. Like, what are you doing? You know what I mean? Like, you could have come out any other way. You could have come out and avoided people. You could have come out through, you know, underneath the fucking cube, like fucking Undertaker or some shit. No one could have seen you. You could have done whatever you needed to do. But he purposely felt like came out through the crowd to get all that love and attention. It kind of reminds me a little bit of like Casey Neistat, the vlogger, right? Um, the famous YouTube vlogger, where for whatever reason, Casey always finds a way to leave in the bits where people are screaming his name down the street. Casey, Casey. He, they, they, those little things always seem to make the cut. But then when somebody comes to his studio and tries to knock and tries to kind of talk to him, he gets really pissed off and shit, clearly because he's on space. But he obviously loves the attention. But he tries to like not want the attention. You know, like kind of like a weird sort of like push pull. Like give me all the love. Shout my name down the street like I'm fucking Harry Styles, but also don't come up to my studio. You know, that kind of vibe. And it feels like a little bit like Drake's doing the same thing. You know what I mean? Like, I want security to make sure these peons don't touch me. I'm fucking Drake, but also give me all the flowers. Like, let me know how much you love me. That's basically what it feels like. And I can't blame him, to be fair. I really can't blame him because he really went full ham and said, you're going to give me my flowers. I'm not going to wait until, um, you know, that you fucking wait later on for you to give me flowers. No, give me my flowers right fucking now. Um, that's obviously the statue there. You can see the fucking paper airplane flying out of Drake. Um, fucking Virgil's hand there looks pretty cool. Picture of Drake and fucking 21 Savage are hanging out. So all in all, decent show. But I would have to fucking wait uh, a while to see if I'm really convinced to kind of buy a ticket to a show. Because if you're just going to be screaming ad-libs, I'd rather not, brother. I'd rather fucking not 